Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my overview of Slitterhead. So for those not across it, I do overviews on this channel. It's where I just have a look at the first two hours of a game. That's the Steam refund window. Steam says you can make up your mind about whether you want to keep a game or not in that time. And broadly speaking, as a rule, I would agree and say that 20 hours in, you're probably not going to change your mind about how you felt two hours in. So it's a short, punchy video, broad strokes info. Keep it around 10 minutes and then you can make up your mind on your own. Right. So straight out of the gate, this game bangs. This is fantastic, a big part of why I game full stop. And I feel like this is probably going to fly under a lot of people's radar, especially it's released today. It's like on a Saturday morning for me. But anyway, my point is it's, it's just all very unusual. And the hope is word of mouth can spread it around because this game is really cool. And I highly recommend it before we even really get into it. So it's made by, oh God, how do you pronounce it? Bokeh Game Studios, Bokeh. But what they are, they're a new-ish studio. This is their first game. And it's led by Keichiro Toyama, the, the man, the one and only, the guy that created Silent Hill. So he left Sony. He's gone out to do his own thing. Apparently, he's recruited a whole bunch of people he's worked with on, uh, I think Gravity Rush was a pretty big hit for him as well. I might have played it back on the Vita. Can't quite remember. But notably for me, he's got, what's his name? Akira Yamaoka, the dude that did all the music for Silent Hill. So it's kind of a bit of a getting the band back together and doing their own thing. Is this a Silent Hill game? Not, not really. It's got a horror element, but it's a lot more sort of action. And funnily, speaking of Gravity Rush, while my memory is hazy as anything, apparently the gameplay loop harkens back to that, at least in a more, you know, third person action kind of way. So yeah, fantastic pedigree, doing something different from probably what you're actually used to from them. And it works really well. These are the sort of games that should be encouraged coming out, especially with a lot of rhetoric. There's a lot of, you know, rubbish in the AAA space. I don't want to just blanket it, but the whole being gaslit that the arms race for graphical fidelity should make up for 90% of a game's worth in the AAA setting. I hate that so much. So yeah, this game kind of looks a little bit last generation, I suppose you could say, if you're prudish about it. I don't particularly care, but I'm sure people might notice or even comment on that. But in execution, this is really original and really strange. So the whole thing's set in like a, a suburb, I guess. I'm not sure how they do districting in Hong Kong called Kaolong. And you play as uh, the protagonist, S sort of a nameless, well, you get a name from someone later on that you team up with, but you, you play as this kind of spirit thing, this entity. And I suppose at the core, you're kind of body hopping around from human to human. And you're in this kind of cat and mouse chase relationship with the titular slitter heads, these unusual monster things that are going around sucking people's brains out. And it's it's very graphic and wild, and there, there will be sequences that switch between, you know, you getting chased by them, but you even chasing them as you start to uncover your powers and become more of a sort of threat. But that's sort of the core, is that you're, you're hunting down and fighting these slitter heads, and when it plays out in combat, the game does lean into the fact that humans are kind of squishy and weak and easy to die. And so you have to kind of aggressively repossess humans as you fight the monsters. And in execution, it's really cool. Narratively, it's a bit strange actually, and I was thinking about it because I'm, I'm really into it. I'm loving it and I'm curious and the th hooks and the thread and the intrigue has got me going. You want to talk about gaslighting in the AAA space. This idea that character-driven drama is something that we want is such a fallacy. I've speculated it might be a masculine versus feminine leaning in how storytelling unfolds. While guys and girls can love a good story, I, I do feel feel that guys are much more objective based, world building based. They don't really care about the feelings of the character and their backstory and their bloody trauma. And this game's really fascinating because I've teamed up with a sort of kind of superhuman, you know, someone that's a bit more in touch. Again, the game hasn't really explained it much named Julie. But what do we know about Julie? What do we know about the spirit? Not not much, right? But they're more interested in taking down these monsters. What do they want? Why are they targeting certain people? A lot of the way that the narrative part of a mission will play out is sort of investigating and trying to get into areas that maybe are out of bounds, so you've got to possess the right person, but it is kind of a bit of a gumshoe detective curiosity. It's all very much narrative objective driven. But yeah, it was just a really stark example of what, what I would call more narrative and objective writing 
leaning, whereas the characters are almost more of a means to an end, and I love it. So the intrigue's got me hooked, I'm curious, I kind of want to know where it's going. One thing that I really like is that when you verse these slitted head things, it generally culminates in kind of a boss battle if they, you know, they evolve or turn into one or you bump into one. And there's this sort of, I don't know what else to call it other than mantis horror. They're these giant bloody nightmare gore praying mantis things, and it's excellent. All the design is really great. There's also like an RPG kind of system. At the moment, I've only got one companion, I suppose you could call it, this Julie chick, and I can level up her, but also through her, there seems to be some passives that level up humans as well. Different humans will have different sort of little abilities too. Um, so some of them can sort of like war cry tank, but the real cool party trick that keeps the challenge on is that if you are in possession of a human when they die, then you'll actually lose essentially a, a life, right? Think a life, a retry, a hit point, whatever you want to call it. You've got like three of them, and if you get caught with your pants down, basically, you misjudge it or the enemy hits you with a heavy attack, and like I said, humans are quite squishy outside of Julie or other companions I might get later on. You can only really take a couple of hits, plus some of their abilities use up health to cast as well. It's all sort of blood based. So you've got to sort of bunny hop around them and then like you go back to Julie, one of her abilities of unlock can revive dudes or at least heal them up in the vicinity. So it creates this really cool interplay. Now don't get, get me wrong, like the actual block, there's a cool deflect system which is camera directional so they will telegraph if they're going to attack from like the top left. You want to move the camera to the top left when you press block at the same time and it works really well. So what you would come to expect is normal you know, action controls of a third person perspective, it's all really solid. But on top of that is the fact that you're kind of bunny hopping between bodies, waiting on cooldowns, trying to leverage different abilities. Anyway, it just works really well. But the game just keeps throwing new and interesting stuff. All of this that I've told you, I would say, is enough to justify the package anyway. But it just keeps giving me cool things. Like, example, just, just before I was finishing up, We've unlocked the ability to, to have arms, you know, cut off on the civilians that you're possessing. And apparently you can go and pick up the arm. I wasn't really doing it much because I just learnt it. Or you can hold a button to regen. There's some sort of quick time thing to resist it or whatever. <laughs> it's just so bizarre. And then narratively, we, we've come across another character. And I'll dance around it because I don't want to spoil. But I also want to get you hooked. And maybe we were t too late to save them, right? Okay, cool. But it was part of the narrative. And it looks like maybe there could be a Groundhog Day component to this game. And we can go back and retry and potentially save someone now that we've got that deja vu uh, memory anyway, my point is like the narrative just keeps piling really interesting little hooks and intrigue on top of it so yeah look I'm, I'm gushing because this is great this is one of the coolest strangest games that i've seen this year and i've heard no one talk about it it's got no fanfare it's released almost on a weekend or at least on an unusual cycle for daily releases it's got some of the biggest swingers in that horror space pedigree behind it. They're doing something totally unusual, totally original, and it lands in pretty much every way that they've gone for it. I love this game, and um, and my hope is that this hype is contagious. If you are looking for something to throw your play around money at, this is it. Anyway, anything more than that, and I'm just sort of waffling. Tim, might just leave it there for the time being, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.